Hi guys, this is Lukisha, and here is my second episode of Coffee, Tea, and Chats with me. And let's see, last time you guys saw my teacup and it was Stitch. And so, um, here's my other favorite teacup that I have. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, look at it, isn't it glorious? It is my Mad Hatter teacup. I like it. It kind of sits all kind of cattywampus. And so there you go. You can see the hat better. There we go. Love it. They're not allowed to drink tea out of just me. No one else can mess with it. Because, yeah, breaking things. I have people in my home who um, have a tendency to smash things that are made of glass. <laughs> we'll talk about that in another one. And how my husband has been able to break uh, multiple things of mine that are glass, backhanding being them off of counters, accidentally dropping them. I'll tell you the story about how he dropped a Pyrex dish and he shattered the tempered glass out of the oven. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a fun story. Thing. We'll try to get him in on that one. But um, for today, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, something that's been on my mind people and their ideas that since I have a treatment that I should be all better now and that everything should go back to normal and I shouldn't have any more problems ever again because I have med and I'm like okay well it's a treatment it's not a cure so yes it's kept me out of the hospital and being in ICU however that doesn't mean that I still don't have little baby swells. It still doesn't mean that um, everything else connected to HAE is gone. It doesn't mean that, you know, I also have a hip injury. I'll talk about that another time in the story. Um, I have chronic pain and stuff. And so it doesn't fix that. So it stops the, you know, crazy airways or, you know, that's what we're hoping and has been doing it so far. And which has kept me out of ICU and ER. But it doesn't mean that it's going to like take HAE away so that it never, ever, ever bothers me ever again. Heck, I'd love that. That'd be awesome and amazing. But unfortunately, that's not the truth. And so I get a little frustrated when, you know, I'm like, oh, I can't do this today or I'm feeling this, I'm feeling a little, Ugh. but you have med. So why are you doing that? Is it working properly? Maybe it's not working properly. So maybe you need to get another one. Um, are you eating a better diet? Because you know if you could eat a better diet, take better vitamins, um, exercise well, get good sleep, it'll fix it. Seriously. If you, if I could, even me, let's put it this way. If I could come up with some kind of medication or some kind of pill that could change something genetically, the color of your eyes, make you, you know, make you taller, make you slimmer, make you grow hair. I don't know. If I could do that, God, I'd be rolling, right? So why is it that people seem to think that I could eat like organic broccoli for a couple times a week or blend it in a drink or something, you know, with some kind of, I don't know, mud from, you know, some Amazon rainforest and, you know, put in there with some, you know, water from some well somewhere and I could drink it and boom, I'm going to be better and I'm going to be healed and magically just all together. So that is something that is unreasonable or my friend, she had something similar and she just drank parsley juice for a week. Parsley juice for a week. Hmm. No. Um, or let's see what's the other one. If you could just take um, some good vitamins that are plant derived from this little village over in somewhere that nobody can say the name, that's going to make me better. Some are like, you know, you should go and um, do coffee enemas. As far as I'm concerned, coffee is not meant for your patootie. I'm, you may be one of those people who do that, and I am so sorry. I am not trying to offend you, but no, I want to drink my coffee. I'm not trying to get it to clean out, you know, clean out nether regions in hopes that it's going to make me feel better. I prefer to drink my tea as well, as I'll do here, and I'm not going to do an enema with it. So that's what I think that tea and coffee should be used for, but that's a whole nother thing. 
And then of course we have some people that think that I should be able to pray it away. And so if I had a better relationship with a higher power, uh, the creator, goddess, the earth, whatever it may be that these people believe in, that if I did that, I should be better too. Hmm. Well, I don't know. We'll look at it this way. If that is such an amazing thing, whatever it is, whoever you pray to, whatever you believe, then wouldn't that help you to be a little bit nicer to someone like me and not say those little nasty little things? Put all things that make you go, hmm, I don't know, so you could chew on that a little bit. And so it's like, is it I'm a little testy, a little bit feisty? Yes, for this one. Just because it's amazing the things that people allow to come out of their mouth, whether it's supposedly to help me, encourage me, um, you know, you don't look sick. What does looking sick mean? Um, you look too healthy to be in that wheelchair. It doesn't look like you really need it. Hmm. Thanks. I wish that was the case. Or you're so lucky that you have handicapped parking because it's right up at the front of the stores. And so you don't have to, I'm like, no, you know the reason why it's there? So you don't run me down in the parking lot because I'm short, I'm in my wheelchair. It's like, shit, you can't see me. So when people so lovingly park in handicapped spaces and they shouldn't be, you know who you are, or they have one parking space for like 200 parking, you know, people to park, 200 people to park, there's one handicapped parking space. And then I have to do the, you know, take my whole life into my hands. And so then my family has to form like this protective formation around me. There's like two in front and one in the back. And they're like looking and, you know, giving people dirty looks and, you know, ready to like throw shoes or throw themselves in front of cars for me just to keep me safe. So that some of you won't run me over. Yes. And so that's why we have the parking spaces towards the front. It's not because we're trying to get preferential treatment and we're trying to be all special and hoity-toity. Um, someone even said to me, oh, you're so lucky being in a wheelchair because you don't have to walk. What was that? You know what? I would have loved to be the way that I was and not have to have my wheelchair. It's like, did you ever think that you're taking all of the weight of your body that you normally have on your legs and your hips and it's your hands and your arms and your chest and you're moving all the weight of your body around? Well, first of all, it wasn't meant to do that. So you're going to have struggles and some problems. So it's not easy for me to be wheeling around in my wheelchair. My shoulders hurt. My back hurts. The first time I had my wheelchair, oh my gosh, I thought I was going to die. Just going from one, like, one little side of the room to the other. I was ready to pass out and kill over and be like, it's over. I'm done. But I persevered. Now I haul. I, you know, I, I get going, y'all. So um, if you see me, just meet me. You might want to move out of the way. I tried to stop, but sometimes, eh. But you saw that in the last one. So, you know, so just next time, think. Think just a little bit before you see these things. Try to understand that having a rare disease, it's not easy. And just because you don't see me hooked up to a ventilator, you don't see, you know, a thing of me in the hospital, you don't see me having a trach or anything like that, doesn't mean that my life is perfect, it's over, it runs smoothly and wonderfully, and I don't have other problems with the disease. It's just that particular part of it has been squashed for now, and praying that it continues to be that way. But I still have things. I mean, because if you are familiar with me already, you'll probably see my lip is a little bit puffy here. I got a little bit of puffiness here. And so, um, yeah, so that's kind of what I have going on today right now. And um, it's, uh, gosh, if I can find it, hand me the syringe, curly girl. And it's so nice that it is um, my Vanna White moment here. She pulled it up for me. It's infusion day. So it's kind of good to have it. So I'm hoping that all this, you know, lovely puffiness that you see in my bottom lip, I have a little pouty look, the little duck thing, that it will go away and that what's in my face will as well. So thanks so much for having this, you know, coming and hanging out with me and for my second, you know, little thing of coffee, tea and chats with me. And so come back again. Give me some ideas of what you like to hear. Um, I'd love to talk about it. I don't know. Maybe next time we'll do some story times with Ryan or with one of the kids or something, or we'll do a family story time. I don't know. We'll figure out something. But if you have an idea or request, you know, put it in the comment section below and I will do my best to get to it. But um, 
thanks again for having your coffee or your tea with me and um, love them a Mad Hatter cup. And so, as always, everybody has a story to tell. Don't be afraid to tell yours. And so, talk to you guys later. Toodles!